Hey guys, Ivan here, and in this video I wanted to talk about the biggest disappointments of this show. And there are a few. I don't want to sound negative, but I thought it would be an interesting uh, video for you guys. And the first thing is definitely this right here. Brandon Curry somehow beating William Bonek. The way the judges decided this. It is the biggest disappointment of this show. You can see the comments everywhere, on Instagram, on YouTube, on all the videos and photos and everything. Everybody is saying that Bonek deserved to win this show. Not only the videos and the photos that we saw on social media, but also the people who were there. The experts, Milo Sharchev and Jose Raymond, who was there in the fourth row, who was watching this show live, had Bonek winning clearly. Check this out. I personally had uh, uh, Bonac winning. I thought it would be impossible to beat. I was only four rows from the stage. Uh, I'm sorry, I thought Bonac won. Bonac was mind-bending. So those are the words of Jose Raymond, who was there, as you heard, in the fourth row. What about Milo Sarcher, what he thinks? I said right away, after the pre-judging and at the finals, there's a clear victory for William Bonac. William Bonac out him, out-condition him, you know, out-power him. And this is exactly the way I feel based on the live stream, based on the videos and the photos that were posted out there. Like here, for example, you can see the lower back. Look at the lower back difference. This shows that Bonac was in much better shape. And when I say shape, I don't mean only more conditioned. I think harder, bigger, fuller. He was overall just in better shape. Look at the glutes, the hamstrings. Look at how much harder are those of Bonac. And also look at the quad sweep that you can see from behind. And also the inner part of the thighs, like legs, the entire lower body. He absolutely crushed him. But the only way I can justify this uh, victory of Brandon Curry is because of the shape. Like in the abs and thighs, I mean, Bonac wasn't even able to flex the abs. He had a hernia, I believe, so his abs are a mess. It looks kind of like a Phil Heath's stomach, but he was able to control it better in the other poses and hide it. Like in this pose here, he couldn't. And there are other poses like this one where, in my opinion, Bonac wins because he's harder, more conditioned, I mean, just overall better, more complete. But as far as the structure goes, Brandon is better in that department. He's just genetically more blessed with a good structure, and I guess the judges were like, yeah, he's not in the best shape ever, he's a little bit uh, worse than Bonac, Bonac is definitely better, but Bonac is a shorter guy with worse structure, with big waist, with, uh, with bad stomach, with a bubble gut, sort of while Brandon has a smaller waist, better wee taper. Maybe it's also because of Arnold Schwarzenegger, maybe his preference affected the judges. He likes his guys that win to have a good wee taper, small waist, you know, possibly even a vacuum, which is something, I mean, Brandon didn't have a vacuum, but he has a small waist, and um, everything else other than the structure and the waistline was on Bonac side. Take a look at this pose. Look at the polish. Look at the details. The conditioning. The fullness. The harness. But I guess the only way I can justify this is because of the structure. Though I think this is the biggest disappointment of this show. Let's take a look at the next biggest disappointment. And that would be the most hyped up man, Brett Wilkin. Now, I would say that the hype was justified because he was moving so fast through the ranks. His first show ever, he was second to Hunter and he was looking damn good and a lot of people thought he's gonna be in top 2, top 3, including myself. I even thought at some point that he actually might win the show. So what happened? Is he just not that good? Well, take a look at this Chicago Pro from last year where he was second. He was in better shape. This time around, the Arnold, they didn't really nail it. He was smooth. So he could have been sharper. They went for fullness and he was full, he was big, he was right there with the other guys as far as the size, uh, but not the legs, not the legs, the legs need to come up more, but the upper body, like from the back or from the front, wherever, he was good, he improved so much, especially that back and those arms, he was much better version of himself, he was just really off. Um, we're not gonna nail it 100% every single time, and I, and I hold a lot on myself for that. This wasn't his decision-making process. There were some things that I could have done differently. 
You heard it guys, so basically what Matt is saying is that this wasn't what they were hoping for, this is not the end result that they were expecting, uh, this is not Brett Wilkin at his best, so maybe next time when he competes we're gonna see a much better version because he definitely did add a lot of size and when he's more conditioned his legs are gonna look better as well. Now uh, is this a bad look overall for somebody who is doing his second pro show in their life? No, he did well, top 6, I mean he was able to beat... Well, only three guys, Regan Grimes, Max Charles and the guy that, that, that won the amateur last year. So let's say in that sense it wasn't much of a success. And I say he's a disappointment simply because he didn't really fulfill the expectations and the predictions of other people. He was able to beat the guy on his left right here, Regan Grimes, who is our next biggest disappointment. Uh, we all thought that it is going to be a breakthrough year for Regan. We're gonna talk about that in a moment, here we can compare Brad to William and as you can see the size is not really that big of a difference, legs yes, but the upper body not really, but William's conditioning and that 3D bubbly kind of muscle, everything is just popping, it just looked really really insane, William was definitely his old self and it's really a shame that he didn't win this show, but as far as Brad Look, I mean, he wanted to be compared to Bonac. that was his biggest wish, he wanted to stand next to the guy, he got that opportunity, and he can see right now how much he needs to work to get to that level, and maybe in a couple of years, when the other guys, the older guys who are at the top right now, like Bonac, like Curry, retire. When they retire, the younger guys are gonna take over, and I'm sure Brett, if everything goes well for him, if everything runs smooth, he's gonna be the next generation of the top bodybuilders. Now, what about the guy on the left, uh, Justin Rodriguez? Did he disappoint as well? Well, he did bring probably his best ever. Somehow he managed to completely ruin everything at the finals. He was much better conditioned uh, during the pre-judging. This is his look from the finals. He was definitely much smoother. My best guess would be that he overate, that he probably tried to come fuller and it backfired. He ended up spilling over and as far as his legs he did improve them they were bigger but it was so obvious they were stuffed with oil as well as his shoulders and his physique wow man what an ugly physique i mean i'm sorry for being so blunt but that's how i feel yes he can come shredded and he's really big he grew a lot but i mean look at the, the, the stomach Look at the, the, the shape of the, of the arms, the triceps are non-existent, the, uh, the oil in the shoulders, in the quads, like, like this physique is a, is a complete mess. Now Bonac, he might have some oil as well, I don't know, I'm just assuming, maybe not, and his physique is also like very freaky, but it kind of flows, it flows well. Now Justin, it's, it's not an aesthetic physique, not even, not even close. If I was a judge, obviously I'm not, and I don't really know the judging rules, but if it was subjective, I would place this guy behind Brett Wilkin. No, I wouldn't really place him behind Regan Grimes, because I guess mass does play a role. Conditioning too, of course, but do you know who this physique reminds me of? Dave Palombo. The father of Palomboism himself. Now, of course, it's not this bad, obviously, but Justin's physique does remind me of this. I mean, the waistline blown out like this, conditioned, yes, without any flow. I mean, compared to Dave, he looks like an aesthetic god, but starting next to the other guys, like Brett, like Samson, like Steve Kuklo even, uh, Brandon Curry, you know, aesthetics are also a part. Yeah, I know conditioning and especially mass is the priority in open bodybuilding, but aesthetics, shape, flow, that has to play a certain role, and me personally, subjectively, I am not a fan of this physique, and again, I will place Brett ahead of Justin, especially after finals. What do you guys think? And just look at William Bonac here, wow, he should have won, man, he should have won. Alright, now what about Regan? Well, we all thought this could be his breakthrough year, was it? Well, maybe the year will be, but the show, no. In case you guys didn't notice, this was the same posing routine that Milos Archev, Regan's coach, used to do back in the day, and Milos is a master poser, so this was a good routine, and it really fit well with Regan's physique, uh, as well as he did with, with Milos back in the day. Now, this is probably the biggest Regan we saw so far. He was big, he was full, he was improved, I gotta say he was improved, 
But I mean, let's be realistic. How much progress can you make from the Mr. Olympia until the Arnold Classic in only a couple of months? Obviously, not a lot. Still, for that short time, he did make changes. His legs were fuller. Overall, he was bigger. And I'm saying that based on what we saw on the stage. If he was more conditioned, he would probably look much bigger on the stage. Look at him here. This is between the pre-judging and the finals. As Milos says, they made a picking mistake, they tried to fill him up and they overdid it. And that was basically the reason. So he was really full, he was blasting full. Here you can see that he was actually really big. Everything was full, the back, the arms, the, the, the shoulders, the chest, the legs. Look at the legs, the legs are definitely bigger than they were before. Not too much, but bigger. But look at the upper body, the arms and the chest. Like he, he grew, he, he was big. But he filled up a little bit too much, you know, in person I'm sure he looked blasting full, insanely huge, but on the stage it never really reflects that way, because the lights are so strong that you need to be diced, your skin needs to be so thin to show all the separation, and when you are in condition you're gonna look much better, much bigger than you actually are, of course the fullness and the shaved roundness that also plays a role, but you need to find the, the right balance, as you guys all probably know. So Regan, uh, he missed the peak. That, I mean, Milos missed the peak. Milos said that in his post. He didn't peak him properly. Now, they have Boston Pro coming up next uh, next week. Hopefully, Regan will do it. Hopefully, Brett will do it too. And all the other guys, I hope. And uh, we'll see what kind of changes can they really make. Uh, can they make up for the disappointments that we saw at this Arnold Classic? By the way guys, if you need a good BCAA product, uh, you can use the link down below in the description of this video and get a discount on classic BCAA product by the Old School Labs. It is an amazing tasting BCAA. It's not really that expensive, but it is great. It's high quality. You can use it during the workout. If you're amped up after the Iron Classic and you want to make those gains, check this product out. If you want to support me and my channel, go ahead and try it. That's gonna do it for this video guys, the biggest disappointments of the Arnold Classic 2022. If you enjoyed this video guys, give it a like. For more bodybuilding stuff like this, subscribe to my channel. Thanks so much guys for watching, all the best and bye bye.